Hello guys, and welcome back to some more Hogwarts Legacy. Let's just follow Professor Fig over to wherever we're going to find the last repository and maybe um, stop Isadora's whole stuff from being realized. Listen, more goblins up ahead. <laughs> more Randall will be pleased. They say that a lot. Let me freaking grab the thing back here, game. <laughs> let me. Let me. Oh, there you are. Ow. I got killed. This is almost too easy. God, dude, the targeting. Oh. Wrong one, wrong one. Why does it do that when I target another one? It doesn't even see me targeting the right other one. Oh well, it's fine. I can't see. Oh, give me a second, I need to see. I can't pick up the weapon when it. Okay, that's a little bit. Okay. I hit the wall. <laughs> You got so much damage. So We're getting closer, Professor. That way. What way? Oh, that way. Let's go, let's go, let's go. There's a lot of them. The goblins have somehow evaded the castle's defensive charms. Get them this way! We shall make quick work of them! How? They got this. There's something wrong with your armor wands that looking weird. <laughs> okay, just push through. Time to move. We're in the thick of it now. We'll show these beasts who's in charge. Yeah! The timing couldn't be better, Professor. How did you get over here? Explode, explode, explode. 
Oh, hello, we have health now. We couldn't be happier to see you, Professor Shaw. Ow. Take this, thank you. Ow. <laughs> that hurts. Oh god, it's one of those things. Bombarda indeed. Well, that was kind of cool. I like that part. Except for the last ending where we, did, we stood there for a little while again. I don't like when games do that, where you just stand there and do nothing. And then all of a sudden you're in a pickle because your character is like... Not logical, if that makes sense. Isn't it a little bit weird? We can easily defeat these things without the wand. I wonder what the wand is. We made it. I'm relieved we got here before Ranrock. I can't believe this is it. The repository has been under the castle for hundreds of years. I, mean, I kind of assumed that there was something Think else below the after we found the, the map chamber. This is what Miriam, George, your friend Lodgok. And countless others died for. Miriam believed this forgotten magic could be used for such good. But she did not know the risks. She did not see what the Keepers have shown you. What Isadora showed you. You are now the Keeper of whatever power it holds. What do you intend to do with it? Oh. I intend to open it, I think. Maybe that would be a good idea. Because we can't keep it hidden here, it's a danger to everyone, so I intend to open it, I would say. Because keeping it contained is just not good. Then someone else might come and they might discover that it's there and then it's going to be a big circle all over again. So I intend to open I've it. I've decided to open the repository. Its power cannot lie dormant for centuries more. After everything you've seen, what about Isadora's fate? I want the power for myself. Yeah, but I can't keep it here. Because then it's going to be used.
I mean, I guess the good... Like, like, where's the third option? Where's the option to say, I want the power to be released, but I want to throw it in an ocean somewhere so the power will get used without anyone getting harmed? You know, like... Like, like, like dropping a nuke that is aimed for Germany or the US and saying, okay, we'll drop it in the ocean between the two so no one gets hurt, you know? This means that there's a nuke right below Hogwarts that is going to stay there forever. And the other one is... I, I, I want to open it and I want to do it as Adora does. Why, why isn't there just one to say I want to destroy it? I want to make sure this is never like used ever again. You're right, I guess. I mean, I don't want to keep it for myself. I don't want to show the world about the power. I, I, I We don't need it. It's, it's like taking pain away. It's an essential human emotion. Uh, you might as well say that we create a new race, which is not ours to create, you know. Uh, so I would say you're right no, then, I guess. You're right. I haven't forgotten. The cost is too high. Perhaps this magic is best kept contained. I'm relieved to hear that. I know the power is tempting, but I'm glad you've decided to keep it contained for now. And whilst that may be the right decision in this moment, I confess I have been thinking... What is it, Professor? I spent all year trying to keep our journey a secret from everyone, including Professor Weasley. But now I wonder if I should have shared it with her and the others sooner. Yes, you should. I tried to tell them, them but the game wouldn't let me. The Keepers wanted this secret to be locked away forever. How long will you keep it? I mean, I guess the, the least I can do is make sure it's not a secret forever. I should keep it a secret for now. I plan to keep it a secret for now. But in time, when I'm ready, I plan to tell those I trust everything and accept their help. I believe that is what Miriam would have wanted. We should trust in others. If anyone can rise to this challenge, my friend, it is you. Arrogance of wizard kind. Like escape. <laughs> Goblins built this repository. It belongs to us. Enough, Ranrock. It was never yours. I've been wanting to play with this. Miriam's wand. If she'd simply handed over the container, all of this could have been avoided. Foolish, self-important witch. <laughs> Seems you were two of a kind. I thought the aim, like no the one would act up against uh, against him or something. Oh boy. Goodbye, Hogwarts. What do I do now? This? It's feeding off the power from the repository. <laughs> I'm guessing I would put it in here, right? Oh, wait a second. that okay there we go I like that huh protected yourself again not 
Throw? You're gonna throw? Ow, that was not what I wanted to do. What? Didn't work? Okay. Where it just won't let me. Is that an input delay or something? Is that what's going on? Ooh, 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 don't do that. Maybe I should enable NVIDIA. Well, not NVIDIA. Is it NVIDIA Reflex? I think it's NVIDIA Reflex. Dealt with dragons before, you know. Me. What is it? Purple, huh? What hit me there? <laughs> what is it? What is it? Come on, give me something. Red, good. Oh god. Okay, what else are you gonna like bring up now? Ow. Oh, there's two? Nice. Dead. How far back is this gonna bring me? Like, if I die, is it gonna bring me to the first stage again? No, oh, the second stage, where I have one of one health. Okay, great. Thank you, game. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna have to use uh, which one is do 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 do. I can use this one. I was just gonna reach that far. Can I heal now, please? I mean, technically not in combat. Come on, please. 
Be nice game. Won't let me heal, huh? But I why would I Oh well. You can't run forever, Anmok. Give up now. How far, how far, how far? Oh, pretty far. Can't do the range. I'm dead. At least I get full health, I think. There we go, full health. Yeah, nice. Okay, what color? Yellow. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm so tempted to slow the difficulty because this is stupid. I, I hate boss fights where they have a heck ton of health and it's just you trying to grind down that health. Oh, look at the damage I'm dealing. Oh, hard difficulty sucks. <laughs> I should have played normal this whole time. No, 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 wrong, wrong target, wrong target, for goodness sake, game. Why? This target, what I want. <laughs> when I'm aiming, like, I'm using the left thumbstick to aim at what I want to aim at, and it doesn't want quite with me. I don't have to... Did he die? I don't think they died. Did he die? I don't know. He has a weird way of doing things. Oh, 
not dead yet. How did that hurt me? Wait, that took way too many freaking tries just saying i might have cut it out i hope i did but that took way too many tries <laughs> Doing, trying to stop it from collapsing. young friend the wizarding world could not be in more capable hands I mean I thought he would die but I liked his character though I mean I guess that's the whole point of them having no real negative traits but still What's with the stutter? <laughs> professor Eleazar Fig. I dare say he was a beloved professor to many of you. Certainly a long-standing colleague to his peers. A famed adventurer and seeker of knowledge. He built a reputation... charging into the unknown. Brazenly disregarding both discretion and safety. Providing perhaps a rather unfortunate lesson for us all. His devotion to adventure was rivaled only by his dedication to Hogwarts. And of course, to his wife, Mary, uh, Midi, um, whom we lost much too soon as well. <clears throat> yeah. Professor Fig represented the best of all of us. Oh, he could be deviously clever, possessed a brilliantly inquisitive mind, and was the most loyal of friends. But perhaps it was his remarkable courage 
for which we will all be forever indebted to him. If not for Professor Fig, Well, I can say with confidence that if not for him, many of us, let alone Hogwarts, would not be here today. Those that knew him best will agree that we must now honor him as only Hogwarts can, by wisely, resourcefully, justly, and the voice sounds so robotic. All that lies ahead. <clears throat> to Professor Fig. To Professor Fig. Although I, I don't want really to have any drinks right now, but I would actually take a drink. If you have, if you have water or something, to Professor Fig. <laughs> Can't believe we lost Fig. I didn't know him as well as you did, but I know he was a good man. Glad Weasley spoke for him. She honored him well. Fig will be well remembered. I wish the same could have been done for my uncle. I wonder if there's a chance Anne would meet me. Sebastian, I can't imagine what you and Anne are going through. Perhaps you'll hear from her soon. I hope so. I, I'll let you know. Sebastian, there's something you should know. It's to do with Victor Rookwood. I heard a rumor that he confronted you outside of Ollivander's. Sounds as if he faced quite a fight. The rumors are true, and I did. But it's not that. Just before Rookwood attacked, he uttered something familiar. The same words Anne heard before she was cursed. Children should be seen and not heard. Wait. What? What are you saying? It wasn't one of Ranrock's loyalists who cursed Anne. It was Rookwood. It was Rookwood all along. This... this can't be. It was the Loyalists. It's always been them. The night Anne was cursed, all she saw were goblins. Once Rookwood allied with Ranrock, Isadora's estate became of interest to them both. That's why Rookwood was there the night Anne was cursed. He was working with Ranrock. When he saw your sister, well, he didn't want anyone to know. So he cursed her, and she's never been the same. So cruel. Rookwood deserved what he got. Thank you for telling me. It wasn't a goblin. I suppose I owe you an apology. Even All if it was. Thought goblins were the enemy. But it was never that simple. Ominous said he's spoken with Anne. I wonder if she'll see me. I'll find out and send word when I know more. Okay, well, I... Guess that's it then? This is not an engine, as far as I can see. <laughs> this just, just... Yep. My, my, my normal everyday clothes, of course. Congratulations, you completed the story of Hogwarts Legacy and reached the end of your school year. With your OWL exams fast approaching, now is a good time to review your field guide progress, explore the world, finish the remaining relationship storylines and side quests, and complete your field guide as you see fit. Um, read mail? Any, anything new? No, it doesn't seem like it. Well, I guess this is a perfect time as any to, to go over my, my thoughts on the game. Uh, it's a small mini review, I'm going to say, but... Now, it's no secret that I've been kind of picking out things I've about the game. About what you told okay. Me Great Hall. I would like to speak with you. Meet me in the Undercroft as soon as you can. Fine, I guess I can do his thingy and then uh, I'll talk more about it. Might as well finish like his side quest Rebellion. before. Like it seems like Natty and everyone else's side quests are completed. It's just Sebastian's that kind of need a little bit of completing. I will lag on the way there, which is one of my main complaints about the whole thing, by the way. No, not Professor Weasley. Oh well, I mean, same thing, same thing. So Sebastian, sure, I'll I'll talk to you. Speak with Sebastian. The game is not completely done yet. Uh, there's still a few things I need to do. 
And bear with me, bear with the lag. This is, is what I've been experiencing after every, like, if, after 30 minutes and 40 minutes of the game. Now, you might understand why I'm a bit grumpy when it comes to this game. Uh, by the way, it doesn't matter if I lower the settings either. I'm playing on high right now, not even ultra. Okay, the Undercroft. Sure, let's... Let's go over there. Maybe I should restart the game and go there. This is just getting <laughs> a little bit too much. The memory leak is just really taking a hit on my poor, poor PC. Okay, so what is it? I'm glad you came. Sebastian, I received your L. What's happened? Ominous spoke with Anne about what happened with my uncle Solomon. She believes I should pay for what I did, but she won't turn me in. She said the guilt I'll have to live with is punishment enough. I'm so sorry, but I'm glad to know that you can at least try to move on now. The thing is, I think I've lost my sister, my twin, forever. She refuses to even see me. I can't blame her. I couldn't really blame any of you if you gave up on me entirely. You all believed in me, and I let you all down. Perhaps she will come around someday. Maybe 10, maybe 20 years, but I maybe someday. I just need some time. Surely one day she'll be able to forgive you. I hope you're right. I realize I can't undo what's been done, but I can try every day to make up for it. I owe you an ominous everything for standing by me. Well, it wasn't easy. But I believe in you, Sebastian. I've had a sense about you since that first day in Defense Against the Dark Arts. Seems so long ago. Thank you. I have no idea what's to come, but I'm grateful for your friendship. I'm glad you came to Hogwarts. Okay, good. Very good. Now for Weasley's little thing, and then I can talk about my, my thoughts on the game more directly, I guess. Alright, Professor Weasley. I'm actually going to fast travel up there, because I, I just cannot deal with the whole... Um in here yeah i just can't deal with the thingy having to lag all the way there just not not interested <laughs> uh where are you professor weasley really okay here we go Now, I don't think there's any point in changing clothes right now. Plus, I, I feel like it would just be a little bit of a waste of time. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's go over and talk to her. Oh, okay. All right, big starter. There we go. Yeah, let's get a little, a little bit of VRAM back. There we go. Professor Weasley, you wanted to see me. I did. We haven't had a chance to speak since I know you were quite close with Professor Fig. Hogwarts won't be the same without him. No, it won't. But I can assure you that he would want us to press on. And that he would rest easy knowing that the future of the wizarding world is in hands like yours. Thank you, Professor. You've had quite a year, both inside and outside of Hogwarts. I've heard all sorts of rumors. You've ridden a graphorn, befriended a goblin, rescued hippogriffs. Even took it upon yourself to help Professor Black's house elf. How did you... It's harder to keep secrets around here than one might suspect. I'm just glad you found such a good friend in Miss Sweeting. It's nice to see her engaging more with her classmates. There have evidently been Snidget sightings in the area lately. 
If the centaurs are to be believed, two Hogwarts students are behind it. I'm certain I don't know what... No need to discuss it further. What I would like to discuss is your wizard's field guide. May I see it? Of course. What do you think, Professor? I think you've been busy this year. It seems you've completed much of your field guide. Well done. But you've still a little left to do. Fortunately, you do have some time to prepare for your OWLs. I will confess, I had a sense about you from that first moment you came bursting in late to the sorting ceremony. I am pleased to see that my instincts were correct. To think you've only been with us a year and you'll already be taking your OWLs, well, it's nothing short of astonishing. Thank you, Professor, for everything. You are most welcome. I look forward to seeing what you do during the rest of your time with us. Okay, that's it. No quest available? The house cup. Go to the. I should attend the end of the year feast in the great hall. Okay, end of the year feast. Let's go. I'm just gonna take a little shortcut. I'm not <laughs> doing that. Okay, let's see. So to get to the great hall, I should probably just go through this. Hello, fellow students. Let's see what the end of the year brings. Who who wins? Uh, it's probably Slytherin, because I'm part of Slytherin, right? What is what's going on? Oh, there we go. I'm guessing these are the owls, right? my character not there? It's her father, isn't it? Oh crap, I don't have the right outfit on for this. Oh, that's a bit sad. <laughs> oh well. Pretend I'm wearing the Slytherin outfit. This year we have seen our students exemplify the bravery of Godric Gryffindor. Yay! The loyalty Woo! of Helga Hufflepuff. Yeah! The wisdom of Rowena Ravenclaw. Hey! Hey! And the ambition of Salazar Slytherin. And so, the winner of this year's House Cup. Excuse me, Headmaster, if I may. One particular student's heroism during the attack on Hogwarts, not to mention the level to which they have excelled in their coursework as a new student, no less. Well, it would seem that it certainly merits, hmm, I'd say, 100 points to their house. Wouldn't you agree? Ah, Isn't that yes. Harry Potter or Hogwarts without Thank last you, minute Professor points? 
I suppose we have our winner. With that guy cheering. <laughs> Seriously, with that guy cheering. That is hilarious. Yay! <laughs> okay, I guess that is the end of the game now officially. Okay, so like I said before, it's no secret that I have some... I ha had a rough experience with the game, let's just say that. And that I have been more than, than a little bit too negative um, in the whole Let's Play thus far. And I apologize for that. But I will also mention that I had to restart after every single video. Now, 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 now just count all the videos in the Let's Play. Alright? And and think, he had to restart all of those every single time. Because he faced stutter that was made by the game. Not to mention, not to mention, I have a 3080 in my system. That's not strong enough. 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Again, it ran fine for 30 minutes, then it started stuttering. Not everyone has the same experience, so... Anyway, I'll, I'll get to the point. What, what do I rate this game as? Now, if we ignore all the performance issues, okay? If we ignore all the performance issues, and just look at the game as a whole, and if it launched without any bugs and everything, it's probably a 7 out of 10, maybe a 6.5. Uh, as a Harry Potter game, it's probably the best one out there. So, you know, when I say Harry Potter, I mean, like, wizard based in the Harry Potter universe or whatever. Uh, it's probably the best one out there. Now, what is my actual experience of the game? So, I want you guys to look at this as my personal experience. Try to relate to all the issues I've had, all the bugs that made me have to reload saves, all the visual bugs I experienced, all the stutter, all the lag, all the performance issues. My experience was a 5 out of 10. Uh, it, it, it gets in the way of trying to enjoy the game. That's how bad the experience was. Now, your experience might vary from mine. I've heard different stories from different people. Some people couldn't play it at all, while others played it smoothly. Even at a higher resolution than me with the same, like, hardware. Which is just weird to me. Uh, but... Anyway. Um, what was my favorite part about the game? Probably the combat. Uh, it is fun to kind of color match things and, and add like spells to different colors and see how that kind of translates into a combo combat system. It was very unique, it was very fun. Uh, but the thing I dislike the most is also how rolling works in the game. Because uh, rolling in this game is not an invisibility frame. It means that as soon as the icon appears above your head, uh, you, you gotta click the button and then the icon disappears. And if you don't, if the icon doesn't disappear, you get a hit. Almost no matter what. Uh, which I think is completely ridiculous. And I may be saying, you sure that's the case? Yeah, yeah yes I am. Because there have been multiple times when I press the button, then the red icon appears while I'm mid-roll. Where they shouldn't hit me in my experience. And then they just predict where I land. And then as soon as I land, they hit me. Uh, so that has been my least favorite part. That has been most of the time how I died and... It's not something you get used to, uh, unless you specifically, like, have never played Dark Souls or anything where iframes are a thing, I guess. If, if you just have a re good reflex and, and or good reflexes and you just roll every single time and stuff, then perhaps you would be good at it. But I never adapted to that rolling mechanic, because in my head, that was a very gamey mechanic and it makes no sense. They shouldn't be able to hit me. They shouldn't be able to predict exactly where I'm going to go, but they do. And they hit you whenever you're out of the roll or whenever you're out of the dodging. Of the, the whole dodging where you like teleport forward. So I I just I didn't like that at all. I I I disliked that so much because it always got in the way of the, the fun combat. So you see how it conflicts with the most positive and then it becomes the most negative? It's it, it just kind of becomes a bad experience in general because of that. Because they both cancel each other out. So then the game becomes very mediocre. Uh, the other negative thing is the writing of the side stories. Like the main story, actually, it was okay. Uh, there wasn't any two, two, two weird issues. 
Uh, the writing of Professor Weasley was fine. Uh, Sebastian's writing was confusing and all over the place. Same with Nettie's writing. Poppy's writing was predictable, but also kind of all over the place. Now, what would you consider good writing, right? What, what was the drive of all the characters? Okay, let us go with that. What is the drive of Sebastian? He wants to save Anne. What's the drive of Poppy? She wants to save animals. Uh, what is the drive of um, of Nettie? She wants to save other wizards from the poachers, right? Uh, so no one gets the, the same experience as a dad or her. All of them have the same drive, okay? To save someone or, or save something. Now, what happens if you write the same story but for different characters? You get this game. You get everyone doing the same things in different ways. You got Sebastian. To get his goal, he goes to the Dark Arts. And he goes to the Dark Arts and goes too far. And thereby he hurts someone. And meanwhile, he doesn't think. Like It's, it's like his brain shuts off. Now, I get that Dark Arts can, can manipulate it into thinking, oh, this is powerful and power can help people and control things. Maybe I can fix the, the, the curse and everything. Uh, then you have the the issue of Sebastian now isn't relatable anymore. His character completely did a like 180 and now he's all of a sudden completely different. And 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 you get the chance to turn him in and everything at the end, which I probably should have done in all honesty, but at the same time it's like like half his choices made no sense there was no real drive like saving Anne sure but why did he go through the dark arts and why did he kill his uncle and why did the uncle attack us you know there are so many whys and hows in, in, in the story and a lot of blood holes it wasn't there in the beginning by the way it, it only happened as soon as he started going against his own character and he started conflicting with himself about what he believes in and everything everyone had given up on Anne he had not and then he brings Anne to uh, the thing is when he goes crazy and they, they they chase her and um what his name was sorry I forgot, I forgot his name the the, the blind uh, Slytherin guy <laughs> ominous there we go ominous and and then they, they try to stop him but he doesn't listen uh meanwhile ominous and Sebastian have a long relationship by the way because they had the undercroft together they had the um, the stuff together, and and we keep making the same mistake. By the way, he kept telling Ominous, "Oh, we're not gonna do it again. We're not gonna do this. We're not gonna do that." And he keeps saying, "Oh, okay, okay, okay." So there's no character progression for Ominous. He, he's exactly how it was in the beginning, except he just gets softer on our character and starts listening to our character more. Uh, I kind of like Ominous more than any of the other characters. In all honesty, he seems like the most reasonable. Uh, he seems like he actually was a real person. Who had actually undergone trauma from when he was younger. I think Ominous is the one that I like the most just because of that. He's the one that makes the most sense. Uh, in the regard of how you would actually act in a situation like that. And uh, what you should do. Ex of course, except for the fact that he just kind of went along and said, Don't do it again. And then he did it again. And you said, Don't do it again. And then he did it again. And stuff like that. Uh, Nancy's story is also kind of messed up. Like, it's messy. Like, in the beginning, it's fine. Because it just seems like she wants to help people and, and stop the poachers. But then she starts getting all personal about it. And, and wants to, like, stop something to happening to others to happen to her dad. And then she blames herself for it. Out of nowhere. Like, in the middle of it, she just blames herself for it. And now her drive is to, like, just kind of focus on something else that could help someone. While trying to deal with herself and her own issues. And in the end, all of a sudden, her issue is fixed. And, and that makes no sense to me. So you bring up this issue she has. She's had that her entire life. And all of a sudden it's just fixed. At least that's how it seems like to me. How, how the dialogue was written to me. All of a sudden she's like, oh yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, okay. I see. Maybe it's not technically fixed, but at least she understands. Or something like that. Which, which still makes no sense to me. Because because you could tell her before and she wouldn't get it. But then she experienced it herself and she gets it. Like, does it mean she didn't trust anyone? Or think no one understood. And now she thinks she understands her dad. But she would already understand the dad. Because she, she was already helping people. So I don't... I don't, I don't get that whole thing. It, it's, it makes no sense to me. Poppy's missions, like I've said in the Let's Play before. They, they made more sense to me. They were more down to earth. And more... Maybe they were a little bit too like extreme. When it comes to like going to animals. And giving them eggs like a dragon. And freeing a dragon. And, and stuff like that. Where it could kill us. Uh, but besides that... it. It was okay. Uh, not too, too, too much uh, about that, I guess. Um, those are the only noteworthy things about the game. 
the special effects are cool. They have they have like cool ideas, cool mechanics, like Aloha Mora, which I disagree with the way they used it. There should just be something that opens the door immediately after you unlock it. There should be no mini game. Uh, or my like my friend told me a, couple, a, a little while back. Uh, he said that they should have Aloha Mora mini game for the tier above the one you had before. So let's say you get Aloha Mora one. Sure, you get a mini game there, but then you, when you get Aloha Mora two, Aloha Mora one level lock picks, they don't have a mini game anymore. They just open instantly. There will also be a way of getting best of both worlds. Uh, the way you learned uh, unforgivable curses were cool. The way you learned normal spells were a little bit confusing and weird because it makes no sense to go on those assignments. And and the people who made the game knew they made made no sense. Hence why they said ask no questions when a teacher. Uh, the old lady who you, taught us Livioso. Whenever she was like, okay, uh, don't ask questions about why we send you on these assignments, just do them. And I get what they mean, but I also think that a lot of the assignments had no relation to the spell whatsoever. And I would imagine that we didn't master the spell and sometimes it could fail or something like that would be a better way of doing it and then have us use it more and then master it after we've used it a couple times. You know, a little bit like Akio, I would say. Uh, except for the fact that Akio, you know, we mastered immediately. But it would be nice if we had to, like, actually do the whole book throwing thing instead of only doing it once. And I get that our character is good at learning magic and everything. Uh, but I, I, I do believe that it at least takes a little bit of getting used to a spell. Even if you're good at it and can do it immediately. At least, at least just get used to it a little bit. Just... And also, another thing I don't really understand is, do we kill poachers or do we not kill them? It's a big question mark in the game, because it's like, the character we're playing as, right? They keep getting comments about your poaching days are over and stuff like that. So do we actually kill them? Uh, at the same time, right? She made a big deal out of killing Rookwood as if she never killed before. So in, in that, that sense, does that mean that everything outside of the story is not law friendly and, and we just don't kill them, but that, ne that never technically happens outside of the story? Or, or what? Because it, it confuses me that our character is like killing everyone and murdering them technically and just kind of hitting them and whatever, making comments on it and then forgetting all about that ever happening. Uh, it's it's a big mystery to me, and it's a little bit confusing. I don't really, I don't really get that, because I was under the impression that we didn't kill people, because uh, we didn't use any killing curses. Maybe we just knocked them unconscious, or we uh, stuff like that, or we somehow turned them in. Um, as I said, and the rescuing animals, I I I don't even know what to say. It it it's a bit contradictory to what you would think, right? You would think that you should stop the poachers, not take the animals. To, from nature to keep them from the poachers, you know? You would think that you should stop the poachers out in nature before they capture the animals instead of capturing the animals before the poachers to keep them in a little aquarium or whatever. I just think there's a bit of counterintuitive and I don't really like how they did that. Um, as you can see, I have way more negatives about the game than I have positives. Uh, but trust me when I say that I do really like the puzzles they have in the game. And I do believe it is great. Um, when it comes to, like, gameplay-wise. Gameplay-wise, it is very nice. Um, it's probably an 8 out of 10 gameplay-wise. I'm not even lying there. But when you look at the game as a whole, the writing going weird all of a sudden, especially the main story, in the, in the, where after, after the whole, um, what's it called? After Lodgog goes to Ranrog and gives him the book, like, when he gives him the book, which makes no sense, by the way, he just hands it over. Uh, after he goes over there and does that, the story just kind of felt rushed and it made no sense. It felt like instead of like going through these hoops to actually finish the story and make it seem seamless, it was just kind of now Ranrock just knows you know, where the final one is and now you have to raise him to it. And it's like, okay, uh, all right, I, I guess I'm raising him to it now. Uh, I was like, okay, all right, I guess, uh, all right. Uh, the whole Keeper Trials, I, I didn't like either. Like, when it comes to the Keeper Trials, they, they... If you heard there was a Goblin Rebellion on the way, and you could just tell them about what happened in the past so they won't make the same mistake. Now, I get that I want our character to see the consequences and kind of think about it in between the trials and figure out exactly what happened and, and why you should be careful, right? 
But at the same time, it's like, if there's a freaking goblin rebellion on the way, w wouldn't you want to, you know, stop it before it happens? Because if they just opened up the map chamber first and said, guard it, it's down there, be careful. Uh, I think they could have stopped Ranrock pretty much immediately. If they just knew what he was after and everything. Like, they knew what kind of magic he was wielding. If they just asked the paintings, they, they knew about it too. So, uh, you know, it's just weird. I don't I don't understand how, how that makes any sense. But at the end of the day, this is a game. And sadly, it's a $70 game. I'm saying sadly because uh, we're getting to the most exciting part now. Box. A lot of them unplayable. That's how the game is to me. Actually, almost unplayable. Uh, Hogwarts and Hogsmeade completely stutter zones and completely lag zones and FPS killing zones. That is not right for a $70 game. And I hate the company for releasing it in the state they have. Uh, and then not updating it for like two months. At least not any updates that any fixes anything for like two months is completely unforgivable for seventy dollars project or uh, 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 a product. Completely unforgivable, and there should be laws in place to prevent that from happening. Uh, especially if you have pre-ordered the game. I didn't pre-order the game, by the way. Um, but I'm saying if someone pre-ordered the game, they received this and they played it for a while, and then they only figured out the stutter after the time is up on Steam, as an example, and they can't refund anymore. They've just been scammed. Uh, especially if they have a lower tier graphics card, they can't run the game. They, they've just been scammed. Like, well, what more can you say? They can't even run the game at 30 FPS. Because um, the, the, the PC just can't handle it. I have, a friend, I have a friend who was forced to mod the game to use Vulcan. Uh, it's Hero, by the way, who I've played with before. She has a 3080 and she was forced to use Vulcan in order to play the game. Yes, to actually just play the game. She was supposed to use Vulcan. Every single time she went into the game, she had stutters all the time. Huge stutters. Went for like three seconds and it, it teleported to like another space in the game. And unforgivable. I, I would not... If, if, you, if you're asking me if I would recommend the game, no. No, I would not. Not for at least three years or two. Because by the time they have fixed this game, I'm going to be like one year older or something. They, they need to get their shit together. I don't care how the company... Uh, I don't care if the company's big, small, or whatever they are. When you release this kind of game, you have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to be honest with people buying it, first of all, which they weren't. Uh, secondly, you need to inform them of what the game is, which they sort of did, but they kind of sold it as an actual RPG when it's not technically an RPG and your choices don't really matter. I mean, there are a few things in the game, but like, besides that, there's not really anything. Reminds me of Dying Light 2, by the way, but there's something else. Um, the, 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 the whole performance issue in the box just shows it was rushed, but there was no indication of it being rushed. Uh, rest in peace, Joe Featherstone, by the way. Um, but, but it's just... I'm just so disappointed. I don't know what else to say. I was I was hoping for more. Uh, I enjoyed Warner Bros's other games like like you know um, Shadow of War, Mortal Shadow of War was really pretty fun and, and exciting to play. Uh, but here it's just it had cool visuals. Uh, it took place on Hogwarts, but honestly, if it was not a Harry Potter game or based in the Harry Potter universe and was just random magic. This game would not have been received as well as it did. I I truly believe that. And if you love the game, it's okay. Like it it, it has it it is good underneath all the bugs and the unplayable times stuff that I have anyway. It it, it is a good game, um, at least very mediocre game. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with being a mediocre game. Uh, especially when it's like in a unique setting like this. But I just... I'm just so disappointed. You have no idea. I, I was expecting to have fun playing this game. But I had to deal with performance issues. Uh, recording just became a hassle. Because 
restart the game every single time and everything. It was just not exciting to me. It was just, it was just a hassle. I, I don't know what else to say. But that's me recording the game. They say you want to play it for three hours and you have to restart every 30 minutes. How would you feel? <laughs> and you paid $70 for that. 70 freaking dollars. I can't believe how the state games are, are, are like launching us nowadays and it's only gonna get worse unless people start to do something about it. Again, I apologize if it seemed too harsh, it's just I believe things need to be said. I'm not a dishonest person, I'm honest to the to the negative effect of the honesty. Uh, I will tell people I dislike them if I dislike them. I will tell people when I'm not happy about what they're doing. And this game is just a great example of something I don't like. Uh, especially, like, not, not the game itself, but like the, the, the way they did it. Unoptimized runs very horribly with the VRAM. It doesn't even look good. Like, like, like. I don't. I don't mean to hate on the game for saying this, but the amount of VRAM and the amount of performance it takes does not translate into visuals. So I don't know what the heck they were doing. If, if you think the game is pretty pretty, that's okay. Uh, maybe I just didn't look hard enough. I suppose. But there's nothing in the game that really like stands out as like top tier graphics. And yet it's still one of the hardest games to run and it doesn't look any better than I don't know what game. Like Let's see, um What was a great game? Like Cyberpunk, I guess? It was an okay game. Uh, at least I, I haven't played it yet, but I think it's okay anyway. But I've seen the visuals of that game, and that game looks uh pretty good, and it takes less VRAM than this one does. Ooh, Avalanche Babies, look at this. My favorite part about the critics, by the way, of every single game, whenever they have them. Nvidia Gameworks, a knowledge provided on the license of the Nvidia Corporation, of course, yes. Uh, Unreal Engine 4, yes. The origin of the software, okay, definitions, a lot of legal stuff. Um, but yeah, if you guys have had a different experience of the game and you really enjoyed the, the Let's Play or you, you, you dislike the Let's Play, you dislike me uh, like mentioning bad things about the game when they happen in the Let's Play, uh, do tell me in the comment section. If you really dislike it, I will try to improve in the future and not be as negative. Um, although I won't promise anything because it just happens naturally to me when there's something I really don't like. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to mention. For goodness sake, game, skip me a no respawnable enemies option. I want to feel like I'm making progress when I take care of enemies, okay? I don't want it to respawn. I said this at the end of every single Let's Play, just in hopes that some person somewhere in the world hears it. Uh, since this is in the credits, I don't think anyone is going to hear it. I did mention it in a video or two videos at some point um, in the Let's Play. But, but, but still, it's... It's, it's, it's not nice. Um, that I have to kill the same enemies over and over again when I just want a mod or something that makes sure they're dead permanently. I really love that. This is a mod that makes it so they, they are, they're not gonna respawn again. Just for me personally. Any game out there, it's just, just a mod that stops them respawning. Even if it breaks the game, I don't care. I feel like I'm making progress. And I would feel like I would actually make a difference in the world if I did that. It's a world-changing thing, right? That you kill the enemies. Imagine zombie games, right? Imagine if we could actually clear a house permanently. And then camp inside that house that has walls. And unless a zombie walks in, there's not going to be anything in there anymore. Doesn't that sound like a lovely idea? 
Same thing with poacher camps. If they're cleared, they're cleared, and they shouldn't be there anymore. Uh, so, so at least that's my argument for it. There are a lot of arguments against it. It's going to be boring. It's going to be empty. It's going to... Yes, but then, you know, if you want it to be filled again, you can just restart the game. Uh, or have an, uh, make it an option again. You can just have uh, respawn all enemies as a thing, or, or like have re like respawnable enemies, yes or no. Um, th th that, that would be great. I think that would be very more fun. But yeah, I I don't know what else to say. It's it's a pretty mediocre game. I don't hate it. I I hate that they released it in the state they did. And if it does improve and the price lowers, I I 100% agree agree with you should buy it. Uh, but for now, I just cannot ethically and morally suggest you buy this game. I, I just I just I just can't. I I feel bad for the <laughs> company. I don't know if I should say that for saying that, but you know, you get what you reap, so to speak. You take advantage of people and try to get them money. I talk back at you and tell you, hey, you can't do that. And then not actually provide something worthy of the money given to you. So, yeah, it's not much else to say else to say it's just a bit disappointing a bit a, a couple of good game design choices uh actually one thing one positive thing i want to say that stands out with this game is the same thing as rage one um is, an, is another game by the way i played before on my channel when i was beginning my youtube stuff um uh, but but Rage 1 had very unique character designs and very cool unique character mannerisms or many mannerism man mannerisms is that as I've said um the way the characters move and act and talk and this game has the same thing uh if there's anything I'm gonna take away from this game and remember it is probably how the characters look and walk and, and talk and 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 show their emotions through how they move. Uh, th that's something that is very interesting in the game, and I, I think that is certainly something I'm very happy they went with. And very cool, because a lot of games just have them staring blankly in your face. Yes, I'm talking about you, Skyrim, and, and all other Bethesda games. Staring at someone and not having any, like, characteristics to your whole body movement, and, and the way you say things is kind of meh. Um, but, yeah, you know... But for goodness sake, companies, stop, like, stop releasing games half-baked. Take your time with them. Make them better. Make them at least playable without having to restart every 40 or 30 minutes. It is unacceptable. It's wrong. You know it. Everyone knows it. You should feel bad for doing it. And if you even if you work with those companies, make sure to tell your higher-ups, Hey, we can't release this. And if they say release it anyway, then you say... We can't release this, but sure. You know, just keep bugging them with it. Uh, to the point where, of course, you're not afraid to lose your job. But you should at least speak out somehow, in some way. At least I believe so. Because um, you, as a game developer, have ethics you need to uphold, even if you're making money and making a living. If you scam people, you should not be happy with yourself. And if you work for a big company and you do what you do, I don't want to tell you to like risk your job or anything. But I will say that you're in the wrong working for them and letting them do this without any kind of pushback whatsoever. Like I get it if you talk to them, like I said, and just say, we can't really do this, but we're going to do it anyway, I guess, because you asked us to. I'm talking about management now, by the way, uh, when, when the developer talks to management. Of course, the developers are not to blame directly. But they need to push back somehow and do something and tell the people we cannot release this. It's unethical. It's not right. And then if they again, if they say and push back and say release it, otherwise we won't be able to pay you or whatever, then just release it. Uh, but something needs to be changed because this is this is horrible and I won't stand for it. Um. From now on, I don't think I'll record games that perform horribly. I, I really don't... I don't think I will. And when I say games that perform horribly, until the game is absolutely stable, I will not play it. Uh, whatsoever. 
And for this game, like I said, it could take two years. Uh, I definitely regret playing this game uh, right now. And again, I recommend you guys don't play or buy it now. Because, again, I'm disappointed. I feel sad. And I even believe I got scammed uh, just based on playing it as I have. Where, you know, every freaking 30 minutes I have to restart the game. And, and then some of the settings didn't save either, but they fixed that now. Like, now my sharpness setting actually fixes. Wow, thank you. Avalanche, you, you, you made my sharpness settings stick anyway. Uh, not, not that that, you know, totally was a requirement at the beginning when you released the game. And, you know, you had to change the sharpness setting every single time you relaunch the game. But hey, you know, it's okay, they got their money. They, they, they don't need to deliver a proper product because that's not regulated properly. So, you know, they got their money and we got this experience. Um, I'm going to leave the video with that. I hope you guys enjoyed the Let's Play, even if it's a little bit negative from my side. And um, I did think it was cool. I liked the character creation and everything, but I just didn't have a great experience. I don't know what else to say. I'm glad you did if you did. Uh, but... I'm never going to be able to experience this game in a proper state. Because now I know the story and everything. And... I know next game Avalanche releases, I'm just going to I'm just gonna think it's going to be broken too. And I'm just not going to get it. I, I don't know what else to say. It's just... They're just screwing themselves over. Uh, it's it's sad it's very sad uh, but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this let's play uh, if you did consider liking and subscribing leave a comment whether or not you agree why, why I suck and why my opinion is stupid and not relevant and I'm being unfair I understand if you think that way and I and I would also understand if you agree with me it's it's one of those things where it's like opinion based what do you think $70 is worth like what, what, what is $70 to you is something that's easy for you to get, something that you have a high standing job and career. Of course, it's not going to be that relevant to you then. Are you someone who struggles to get by, who needs who needs the money to just kind of buy something that lasts for like a month or a year or something? Like this game as an example, and you're gonna you're gonna play it for like a year or like a couple of months. Is that worth it to you? Uh, especially with all these issues it has, is it worth it to you to wait three months before the game gets patched and actually becomes playable, or even up to like a year or two? Or uh, would you be the kind of person that, I don't know, don't care and just kind of deal with the problems and think that's okay for the price? Let me know in the comment section. Is it worth it to you? <laughs> and do you agree or disagree with what I say? I will read every single one that I can read. Um, Of course, if I get like a billion, I won't be able to read them. But at least I always try to read at least the first hundred if I ever get that many. So so keep that in mind. I will probably read your opinion and your view. Uh, I will also think it's relevant. Of course, if there's like 50,000 people versus 20,000 people that say, hey, it's okay if they release it this way, as long as I get to play the game, then I'm obviously in the wrong. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, then again, if it's the other way around, then I'm in the right. Uh, there's only one way to really figure that out. Like, I'm, I'm not multiple people. Maybe, for all I know, the dialogue in the game could be great, and I'm just stupid. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, so, so yeah. Again, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you in another one of my Let's Plays, where hopefully I'm I'm more civil and less negative. Um, again, hope you enjoyed. Stay awesome, and uh, be wary of how you spend your money, because it could be spent on so many things that could benefit you. Uh, especially where the money goes is important because you send a message every single time you don't buy something. Again, if there's like a billion other people that buy it, then you don't really send a message and you just kind of lose out on stuff. But, you know, at some point, there's a limit and this is the limit for me. With that, I will end the video. And uh, like I said, stay awesome. <laughs>